Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to install some Traffic Master flooring. Um, turned out pretty good. We're pretty happy. 75 cents a square foot. You can't beat it. And um, let's get on with the video. I've been putting down this Traffic Master floor. And when I first started, I was having difficulty with it, a lot of little things, and I started discovering more and more tricks. And the more little tricks I discovered, the uh, easier it became. So I just thought I would maybe share some, since I couldn't find anywhere where it actually told me any tricks or anything. So, Scarlett, you're in the way, <laughs> girl. <laughs> Get out of the way. So, we're going to go over a couple of tricks here. Number one, carefully lay it together and tape it. I know that sounds so simple, but at first I wasn't tipping, taping it and, and things would come apart, stuff would open up and I'd have it just perfect and then blah, blah, blah. Second is, kind of put them in like this, slide them a little bit, get them right in where they're supposed to be and then gently let it lay down. Now this one laid down. Sometimes they don't lay down. Sometimes the butt joints here are just a little bit off and you can't really tell it till you put the next piece in. Next little trick I learned, um, and we'll just kind of go over setting one piece here, is I slide it, bring it down just till it touches, barely. You don't want it to be too tight, but you want it to just touch. And then right here, there's a tiny little gap. So I kind of work this. And I can't quite get this little gap, which means that right here is probably not as tight as it should be. Matter of fact, if I run my thumbnail here and here, I can tell that this is a little bit tighter. So the piece is kind of sitting like that. It's almost impossible to tell, except there's a little crack right there. That's the only way I can tell. What seems to be the only thing that works, you want a nice long piece with a factory edge and a flat edge here. Carefully put it in and you can see how the whole thing's up. That means it hasn't locked itself down. And for some reason, this great big mini sledge seems to work better. I had some other hammers, some smaller ones, but this thing, you just barely touch it and it works. Now, so then I look at that, that's up in the air. And it lays right down. And I'm just barely tapping it. And it popped right in. And now that guy is beautiful. It's barely tap it though. But sometimes, usually if I get it and just kind of kind of slide it and go like this. I can get it to just lay right down, but sometimes just absolutely can't. And I was kind of missing just this little 30 second of an inch right here as I was going, and it was causing me all kinds of trouble. But now I've pretty well got it to where it just almost installs itself. It flips in so easily. So I'm gonna try this one more time, see if I can have a problem um, the more I install this Traffic Master flooring, the less problems I have. When I first started out, I was not happy. <laughs> but now it goes together like nothing. So it just goes to show everything has a learning curve. Now, to put a little bit in perspective, I started installing was well, a click floor. It was just, we called it fake wood flooring. I used to own a store that sold it named Carpet Alaska, and um, we had to glue everything together. So that's how long I've been installing this type of flooring. Now, granted, it's been a while. I've been retired and a few other things, but all that to say, you just got to figure out what the little idiosyncrasies are for each product, and it seems like they all have what works really good for one product, just doesn't work at all for the next. Some of them, you have to put them together and, and smack the butts in. Other ones, like this one, for example, 
see if I can get it out here. Um, uh, Should have. Anyway, can you kind of zoom right in here? There's a part here that moves on it. And it, I didn't even realize that at first. So this one, you bring it in tight. You bring it in tight just so it touches. And then, then I just back off a tiny bit. Well, I could even get it tighter than that. And of course, this piece is going to fall in just perfect. And then you just bring it in and just like that. I just wanted to show you one thing here that I thought was very interesting. There's this little plastic piece that goes in the end. Now, I cut this on the table saw because it's my finisher, and um, this little piece went choom, flying. So you got to make sure you put them back because these are the little secret to how these ends lock together. So if you'll notice, it's like spring-loaded right there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But, um, and that's what happens when it falls in place, this pushes back and it clicks in place and this comes forward. And it just clicks right into place. That little plastic piece kind of moves back as it goes down and then it locks it. Now, sometimes that gap is open just a little bit more. I can run my fingernail on it and find out that one's perfect. And then I'll just take a piece and tap it. Now, if I do tap it, it's gonna be minimal and I have to make sure that I have a butt piece that matches up with this. So it'll come in here nice. Nothing will get damaged. Take the big hammer, just a little tap, and then that'll just bring it right in perfect. Although, to be honest with you, most of them get perfect. The other thing I have is a little cart. See this, <laughs> just follows me right around. Has the flooring on it. So we'll try another one and see if it has a problem. And do my little slide thing, which seems to just make all the difference in the world. Bring it down till it just barely touches. Look at that. It's not amazing or what? I'm starting to really love this floor. We ran out of money and couldn't really afford the $4 a square foot stuff. And so we were able to get this floor for 75 cents a square foot on sale at Home Depot. And me and my wife couldn't be happier with the way it's coming out. Well, I'm almost done with the floor. So I thought maybe I should do one last little video here and see if I can um, tell you everything I've learned. I wish I could just start over at the beginning. This product ended up being so easy to work with. Man, if you don't follow its rules, then you can just fight it all along. So if I just get this dog out of my way. What? I was calling over here, Scarlet. Oh no, I can do it. Sorry. All right, look out, look out, Google Dogs. So, I have pieces cut here. I did a uh, 13 inch offset, so I like to just Go ahead and do three rows at a time so I don't do a lot of crawling. Slide back and forth, bump, set. When they sit flat, they just flat, everything's good. When they try, when they tend to kind of be up just a little bit like this, that's when they need a little help. Like usually never on the first three starter rows. <laughs> I just bump it up till it touches the wall and let it fall down. And notice I have all my pieces on the cart. That. It saves me so much trouble. So anyway, just so it barely touches, right there, lays flat, clicks in. That one's not tight. And now it's nice and tight. And that seems to be the secret for that. And you can see this one, 
how it's up in the air. So even though it looks good, something's not right. Still not wanting to fall up there, it just fell right in. And that's right there. So the, the two things that don't do well, let me put down the next two pieces and then I'll tell you two tools that seem to be useless on this floor. Okay, this bar works wonderful on especially the vinyl floors. We have in the entryway, in the bathroom, we have the really thick that come with the pad. And this bar works wonderful. On this stuff, I just haven't found a need for it. I mean, maybe when I do this wall, I'll clip this bar in there. Um, we'll see, we'll see when I do that wall. The other thing that I found to be very frustrating is I bought the tapping blocks and the tapping blocks tend to chip this edge up. I destroyed several pieces trying to tap them. As you can see, there's very little tapping to be done. And when I do have to do any tapping, just a little rip of flooring. This cut, every once in a while you have to run through the table saw or whatever and you know, it gets tapped away. That one I've had to beat a few, but this is the tapping block for this flooring. It's just a scrap piece of flooring. Um, I haven't figured out how to use wedges. Whenever I try to use wedges, they fall down. But when I start, I tape together a good three or four feet of flooring and it's all loose so it slides and then I get it back in place and it tends to just stay where it's supposed to be if I'm careful. Especially if the stuff's just falling in like this, there's not really any tapping. Once I get to a place where I'm gonna actually lock it in, then I'll go back and make sure that I have everything. Now my drywalls, well, here it's not really lifted much, but most of the time the drywall's lifted a little. And so I just shoot for putting it flush with the drywall. That way it has a half an inch under the drywall. When I built the kitchen cabinets right there, that board that you're looking at, I actually raised it up a half an inch. So the flooring is perfectly flush with the edge of the board. You can't really even tell that it needs a piece of trim, but once it fall, drops down, there's three quarters of an inch gap for the flooring to expand and contract. So it all works, it all works out well. We're good. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We are loving our floor. And the next video we're gonna do will be the siding. I'm kind of looking forward to that. It'll probably be a two-parter. There's a lot of um, things to go with it. And just for a little bit of a view, here's how the house kind of looks with the siding. So it turned out pretty good. We're trying to imitate a tree, brown on the bottom, green on the top. But we're pretty happy. So I hope you guys have a great day. And we'll catch you later. This is Stinging Nettle Farms, signing out.